you know, I just wanted to start off with just your thoughts on the price action these last, what, 15, 16 hours or so, and not that we're military or geopolitical strategists ourselves, but uh, is it too early or is it time to start trading as if we are headed towards a resolution in Ukraine? I think it's too early to price in resolution. I think that the outlook right now still remains quite uncertain in terms of how the Russia conflict with the Ukraine is resolved. And so I think for investors trying to pick the bottom, if you're a medium to longer term investor, we have seen you know significant multiple compression and price consolidation over the last few weeks and, and really year to date. Um, I think if you have a longer term horizon in, in mind, then now our, you know valuation would be supportive of, of getting in. But I think if you're really trying to time the market on a shorter term basis, which is near impossible to do, you know, I think we're in for more uncertainty and more volatility in the days and weeks ahead. Right. And where would you say then the, the major in terms of the major price dislocation and I, I guess, you know, the best opportunities right now, given the information we have, where do you think that is? You know, what are you looking at more closely right now? So I think there are a lot, there's been a lot of dispersion in the market, and I think there's been a lot of dislocation in the market. You have the tech sector names like Amazon, which are off 25% from their highs, You and, and you know that, that really extends to the broader tech sector. I think then also looking at sort of more quality-oriented indices like the S&P 500 relative to Europe, also offers you know value given that it is somewhat more insulated from some of the the pressures that you're seeing coming out of the conflict i though do think that going forward you are going to see more dispersion you are going to see outperformers particularly in those that are more leveraged to higher prices or have pricing power you know the industrial sector the fertilizer sector metals mining energy all stand to benefit um but then companies in the consumer discretionary and consumer staples that may be more exposed to the lower end consumer that's going to have you know the dual punch uh, of both having higher commodity prices feed through to hit their income as well as have you know some stimulus taken away i think are going to be hit hard so i think that you really need to be very specific in terms of how you're exposing yourself to the market going forward it's not going to be you know everything rallying in unison um like we saw over the last 18 months and you know on that point that you just made on commodities what are the second third degree you know sort of price implications that you know, i need to watch out for uh, i'm sure you've been inundated with just a commodity story too you know i'm just wondering what that means for i guess inflation the you know the policy response and asset allocation so we've taken up our inflation expectations for the world, you know, pretty meaningfully um, over the last few weeks, and are expecting that it is going to be a persistently higher inflation environment um, for you know the rest of 2022. What you're starting to see is, is not only are you seeing the you know first degree hit of commodities that are likely to remain higher, but you're seeing that feed through with some of the supply chain just, just uh, challenges that are going to continue to be disrupted and be exacerbated because of the conflict in the UK or in, in sorry the Ukraine and, and Russia. And just one example of this is you look at wire harnesses where a significant portion of wire harnesses for cars, which are you know an important component for all car manufacturers, are manufactured in uh, Ukraine. And now they're not going, you know, because of the challenges, because factories are shut down, that's going to be a challenge to car production. Um, in addition to that, you're seeing you know continued um, disruption from the semiconductor supply chain, which is also going to be you know another um, obstacle for the car manufacturing sector. So you know I think that we're just in very early days of really trying to suss out what the disruptions are, but you're starting to see some of these challenges highlighted, and I think this is going to create more difficulty, you know, particularly um, for, you know, those that are really reliant on some of these raw input costs from Russia and from the Ukraine. What this means for central bank policy, I think, is a little bit of a divided story. I think that the Fed is likely to remain on track with hiking 25 basis points in March, and will likely hike about... Uh, you know, five to six more times for the rest of the year or five to six times uh, total for the rest of the year. 
Um, in addition to that, when you look at ECB, I think the ECB, just given the extent of the hit that's likely to flow through to both inflation, but more importantly to growth, um, I, I think that you're likely to see the ECB be a little bit more um, you know, patient in terms of how they're approaching monetary policy. And whereas, you know, as recently as two months ago, the market was pricing the ECB getting back to zero. I think that's really a question mark right now. If this uh, conflict continues to remain, um, you know, sort of a hot conflict, I think it's going to be very difficult for the ECB to raise rates this year.